All right. Um, good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Robert Rock with the Denver Police Traffic Investigations Unit. Last name is spelled R-O-C-K. Uh, I'd like to introduce an investigative team to you. Uh, this is Sergeant Dave Bingham, last name B-I-N-G-H-A-M. Detective Stephanie Linkus, L-I-N-K-U-S, and Detective Dave Ryan, R-Y-A-N. So we're here to talk to you today about the uh, incident that occurred yesterday on the 3rd of January at Colorado and Mexico. Um, it was a four vehicle collision that resulted in two people uh, dying, at, uh, one on scene and one was transported. And then we had uh, five other in, or six other individuals that were transported, including the uh, driver of the car that uh, started this whole incident. I will uh, be having uh, Detective Ryan step up here in a moment to explain the dynamics of this collision. Uh, but I did want to share with you that we have received notification on the, uh, from the coroner's office on the identification of the two parties that uh, lost their lives yesterday. Uh, the first party, Mr. Anthony Mills, date of birth 129 of 73. Uh, he was pronounced uh, deceased on scene. And then uh, Mr. Jonathan Nichols, date of birth 113 of 1986. Uh, he was transported and later pronounced deceased at the hospital. Um, at this time, I'll ask uh, Detective Ryan to step over here and explain uh, what he was able to determine uh, for the collision dynamics, and then I'll come back and uh, talk about some other issues and then answer any questions you might have. Sorry, I kind of on last minute pulled up a small photo. What's that? Could you say your name for us? David Ryan, R-Y-A-N. So this uh, this kind of a, a small scale that we put together here real quick of the collision, there's a couple events that took place. Uh, first and foremost, what happened was we had uh, two motor vehicles that were stopped in um, northbound traffic on Colorado Boulevard, stopped at the red light. Um, the individual that caused this collision was traveling at a high rate of speed, um, traveling towards this uh, intersection at Mexico. He failed to stop, uh, and witnesses have estimated anywhere from 70 to 80 miles per hour. Um, he struck the vehicle where the two deceased were occupying. It's a Pontiac Vibe that they're traveling in. They're at a complete stop. They were then pushed into a Ford Escape that was occupied by five individuals who were all transported by the hospital. Uh, subsequently, what happened after that was a Ford Escape was pushed out into traffic, and it was hit by a vehicle that was traveling eastbound on Mexico through the intersection. That vehicle is a blue Ford Ranger. And after that blue Ford Ranger struck this side of the escape, it sent it spinning and rolling onto its side. Um, at the same time that the Ford Ranger was striking the Ford Escape, the vehicle where the deceased were driving in uh, was also moving forward and struck the passenger side of the blue truck. The vehicle the deceased was, was in then spun out to the uh, northeast corner of the intersection where it came to rest. The blue truck was redirected to the north, north of the intersection where it came to rest as well. And then the black SUV, which caused this collision, continued through the intersection and made contact with the Ford Escape again. After the Ford Escape was on its side, the black SUV came to rest in the windshield of the Ford Escape. And that's pretty much, um, those are kind of the main events as to what took place uh, during this collision. So to clarify some of the things that um, we were able to determine yesterday, uh, there was an initial call that the Denver Fire Department and the Denver Police Department received on a party slumped over a wheel at the location of uh, Colorado and Evans uh, right around that area. Uh, fire department was able to uh, show up there first and they did find an individual matching that description and when they attempted to uh, make contact and assess whether that uh, gentleman needed uh, help or not um, when he apparently came to he uh, put his car in gear and he uh, took off driving northbound on Colorado Boulevard um, at a high rate of speed and, and kind of weaving so the fire department requested that the DPD still continue in um, which they did and then at that point in time uh, they lost sight of the vehicle as it crested that hill if you've been uh, northbound on Colorado Boulevard there right at the highway there's kind of a hill and lost sight of it right over the hill there and so they 
uh, the fire department uh, pulled out onto Colorado Boulevard and, and started traveling that direction. At that point in time, the collision occurred. Um, they heard, uh, then the uh, witnesses started calling in the incident and uh, police started to respond to that location. And it's at that point that they uh, found this. The uh, one engine did uh, arrive on scene and assisted with uh, extrications and uh, assisting the injured. Um, at this point in time, we are, uh, well, we have um, made a preliminary arrest of the driver, uh, Samir uh, DeWitt, um, for investigation of driving under the influence, and uh, we're looking into uh, that aspect of this collision. Um, we're also looking into any possible medical uh, issues. As uh, you all know, we've been, been here before with uh, people with potential medical problems, and so we're trying to uh, determine whether that is a factor or not. Um, but the details of that part of the investigation, uh, that's as much as I can get into with that at this time. Uh, we have been notified that uh, everyone from the third vehicle that was involved that was occupied five times, uh, everyone has been released except for one person who is in fair condition at the hospital at this time. Uh, obviously, the uh, uh, Mr. DeWitt is uh, still in the uh, hospital on a police hold. and. Um, uh, the two decedents have, have already been uh, uh, taken to the uh, Denver coroner's office where they were uh, autopsied this morning. This time I would uh, entertain any questions you might have. How fast do you think he was going? Um, that will certainly be something that we're going to be doing an accident reconstruction on to determine that calculation, but um, just uh, a preliminary estimate, at least twice the speed limit in that location. Um, we have uh, you know, it's 35 through there. Um, looking at the damage that was done to the vehicle that was struck and then forced into the other car, uh, and many of you have seen the video of it and, and the pictures that were taken yesterday. It was uh, crushed from the rear and from the front to to the point where if you pulled up uh, the NHTSA website and looked at their 35 mile an hour uh, crash tests, that's it, it looks worse than that. Obviously, we had some uh, what we call override and underride where. You've got a high-profile vehicle that hits a low-profile vehicle, so it, it impacts the trunk rather than the, uh, uh, say, the uh, frame of the vehicle, which, you know, trunks and hoods of vehicles crush a lot easier than the frame of the vehicle does. So it's sometimes hard to tell, and cars these days are designed to crumple up like a, a piece of paper to keep the people inside safe. But in this instance, uh, it was such, uh, such severe damage that the uh, folks inside that vehicle could not survive it. Yes. Hearing that this person is a limo driver, is that something that you're looking into? Um, it's not something that we're necessarily looking into that's uh, um, specific to this case. Uh, the vehicle is uh, licensed as a limousine, uh, but as far as um, you know, what relationship that might have, uh, the only thing that we would be looking at is what was he doing in that area, and what can the company or anyone tell us about that? Have you found anything out regarding that? Um, at this point, uh, the investigation's ongoing. I mean, we've certainly discovered some things, but uh, we're not at liberty to share those at this point in time due to the fact that there, there is a crim this is a criminal investigation and uh, there may be additional charges pending, but nothing that really relates to the limousine was there issue. Was there any sign that he was driving under the influence, such as you know, alcohol, the smell of alcohol, or, and, and do you know if he had any medical history of, of issues in the past with like seizures? Um, those things are currently under investigation, and um, as far as uh, any indicia of alcohol, I can't get into that um, because we will be presenting this case to the district attorney's office for a filing decision. Do you know anything about what the driver was doing prior to this being asleep behind the wheel, prior to the initial call? Do we know what prior to that initial call, um, we're collecting that information at this time, but we don't have a clear picture. Has he made a statement yet? Um, not at this time, but, has he, has he lawyered up but, but we, we intend to uh, uh, obtain a statement from him here shortly. It was primarily due to the fact that he was undergoing medical treatment that we couldn't interview him at the time. And did he, so he's still in the hospital, but only one other person is still in the hospital? That's correct, yeah, and they're in fair condition, so had he that's been, good. Did, had he had clients in the car with him previous to slumping over the wheel? or? Uh, not that we can uh, determine at this point in time, and uh, we haven't been able to determine that there was anybody uh, else in the vehicle with him at the time of the crash either. 
you know where he was right before? I mean, had he been at a bar or anything like that? Do you know? Um, at this point in time, it's part of the investigation that we're trying to track down. And how long was he there? Like, he was actually on Colorado Boulevard, what, just like stopped and slipped over? Or? Um, yeah, initially on the roadway, but then uh, in a parking lot in that area. So, yeah, and, and there was just a concerned citizen that called in to uh, the Combined Communication Center to report that, and that's how the uh, police got the call to that location. Was initially in a parking lot? Um, initially on the road and then uh, moved his vehicle to a parking lot. So he was so in the parking they, when lot they, when the firefighters contacted That's correct. Do you know what the relationship between the people on the Ford Escape is and they all family or friends? Um, Several of them have the same last name, and, and we're hoping that within uh, another day we'll be able to get you a, a completed copy of the accident report, but um, it looks like uh, family and friends. So the, the two people who died were in the Florida State? No, they were not. They were in the Pontiac Vibe. Oh, in the Pontiac Vibe. Yeah. And do you know their relationship to each other? Um, not at this time. There were no other people Correct. Yeah, just the two. Yeah, any time you have a vehicle that's that size, that's speeding, it carries a tremendous amount of energy behind it, and the impacts are a lot greater. I mean, we're constantly trying to tell folks, slow down, obey the speed limits. I mean, that, that's why we enforce speed limits. Every time you increase your speed another 10 miles an hour, you're quadrupling the energy that, that you're bringing down the road with you. I mean, it's, it's a simple physics formula. And I don't think a lot of folks have, have an appreciation for just how dangerous that can be. It increases the amount of distance you need to stop. It increases the amount of distance you need to react. So that, for this particular situation, um, pending what we find out about uh, any levels of intoxication, if any, or uh, anything else of that nature, we just really caution people to follow the speed limits. I mean, really is getting somewhere a couple seconds ahead of time worth the risk. And. Um, you know, I've been doing this a lot of years. Uh, it's not. One thing I noticed um, on scene yesterday was it didn't look like the passenger airbag in the Pontiac 5 deployed. But did, is, am I correct there? Did, did it deploy? Do you know? Do you guys remember? I don't know if that would have made a difference or not, but I'm just kidding. We, I don't recall. Uh, yeah, we, we'd have to look and, and uh, you know, look into that. I mean, certainly we, we have preserved all of these vehicles as evidence, and that's something that uh, um, really doesn't... Uh, play into our scenario as far as a criminal investigation, but is always um, subject to uh, investigating in the civil realm. Um, if we note that something seems to be clearly out of place, we'll investigate that. And we have found that people have had airbag deployments and they haven't gotten their airbags replaced or they haven't replaced them with ones that are certified. And so, you know, that's that, that could be an issue if you didn't see it, but I, I can't say that I, uh, I noticed that in any of the uh, photographs that I reviewed. Does it look like he tried to stop at all? Some of the witnesses were saying that, you know, it was clear there was traffic ahead that was at the, at the line. Does it appear that he tried to stop or did he just fell right into it? Yeah, at this point in time, we did not notice any uh, brake marks prior to impact. Is there any thought that he may have been unconscious or fallen back asleep? Oh, absolutely. We, we always look into that. I mean, certainly, you know, in the uh, Christopher Booker case, um, that really brought to the forefront of the public's attention that we could have people who have medical issues and we've certainly had people who've had heart attacks before and uh, behind the wheel and have caused bad collisions so that's always something that we have to look into as a potential uh, factor in every case which we're looking into in this case as well but typically because that's kind of ways it, i mean typically if it was a medical issue wouldn't you expect him to decelerate rather than accelerate not necessarily i mean and i can speak to you uh, on the heart attack issue uh, typically when people suffer a heart attack their body goes rigid and so if their foot's on the accelerator at that point in time they're going to do nothing but accelerate is he being treated for a heart attack uh not that i'm aware of at this point in time he, he's in, in serious condition at this point in time. Yeah. Just one or two more questions, if you have any left. Um, so do you know, so I assume this would be in the charges, but um, I'm just double checking. Do you know if he had a valid driver's license or a valid um, commercial driver's license? Do you guys recall that? 
According to uh, according to the information that I have here, it appears that he does have a valid driver's license and that there are no. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot.